Hi, this is Bella Mehta reporting from Milan here at Eular for Room Now. Um, I just wanted to discuss a quick update on the Eular 2023 recommendations. Um, so, as we all know, lupus is, you know, is a pretty severe disease. It's um, there's a lot of delay in diagnosis and treatment, or uh, uh, for at least 20 to 30 percent of the patients. Um, so I think the ULAR guidelines were trying to highlight that. Um, what they, uh, they 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 did want to focus on early diagnosis and treatment and things like renal biopsy. Um, they said that if you think about it, just do it. It's it was um, I think they're recommending renal biopsies for anybody that you think um, would help. It's almost like lumbar punctures. So if you think about a lumbar puncture, you should do it the same way. If you think about a renal biopsy, you should do it. Um, they did talk about some quality measures. Um, and these are 18 standard quality measures that they think that all lupus clinics or um, hospitals uh, taking care of lupus patients should universally accept. Um, the next big thing uh, was uh, chronic glucocorticoids. I think there's a push from everywhere to decrease the steroid exposure. And, and, and of course, I mean, it comes from a lot of data with infections and mortality going up in lupus. So um, they're saying less than five milligram per day of prednisone um, should be targeted. Um, and in fact, a lot of nephrologists on the uh, guideline panel or the recommendation panel um, even uh, sort of pushed for um, trying to do this without steroids. So steroid-free remission uh, for both uh, new onset and relapsing disease. And, and they're saying that use glucocorticoids just for bridging therapy, but not as a therapy. Um, now that there's many more agents available for lupus, there's many uh, glucocorticoid sparing, sparing therapies that um, can be used. Uh, uh, of course, um, they do recommend that hydroxychloroquine is pretty much recommended for all patients with lupus. Um, for extrarenal disease uh, specifically, uh, you know, there is a confirmation um, of efficacy of belimumab. Uh, there's some trials with that, uh, which are which were also presented at Hular. Uh, and if from Lumab, uh, again, it's approved. The TULIP trials um, now have three-year uh, follow-up data showing that it does help decrease the glucocorticoid burden. Um, so, so given there's new, new drugs available, I, I think they're uh, now pushing for um, trying to decrease the steroid burden uh, much more. Um, the next one was, um, I, I think, um, an important one I thought was that they're reintroducing or, or re-emphasizing the use of cytoxin. They still think that it's beneficial, even uh, in, you know, in, in some cases, using cytoxin and rituximab together in, um, you know, in severe refractory cases. Um, in terms of skin disease, again, hydroxychloroquine remains sort of uh, the, the number one or the, or the must uh, try drug. Um, then comes methotrexate, Celsept, anifrolumab, belimumab. Uh, these are all considered second line therapy uh, with hydroxychloroquine, of course, the first line. Um, again, uh, biologics also may help, and uh, you know, belimumab is also something that can be tried in skin disease. Um, uh, lastly, hematologic disease. Um, again, uh, definitely rituximab and Celsept seem to be the newer trends getting into the um, uh, the guidelines or the recommendations. Um, inactive nephritis, initial therapy, uh, you, I think uh, they, they should receive, um, you know, some sort of steroid, even if it's uh, low doses or uh, IV steroids until they are bridged to either uh, cyclophosphamide or Celsep. Um, uh, there is uh, some new evidence between 2018 and 2022 uh, in the treatment of lupus nephritis. And there's three uh, successful phase three RCTs, um, a couple, uh, the one with belimumab, one with oclosporin, um, 
you know and and velimumab definitely reduces uh, reduce the flare rate uh, in the uh, fury and ejm paper i think um so that's what that's what is um, sort of uh, pushing the guidelines towards recommending it um there's um you know the, they're also saying um you know, they did discuss some of the pros and cons of belimumab versus voclosporin. Um, and I think uh, one of the things that I, I took away was um, that voclosporin does work very fast and is useful in immediate sort of urgent case scenarios, but does come with some adverse effects. Whereas belimumab is a much, a much more gentle sort of a medication that... Um, that does have power and a sustained response decrease the does decrease the flare rate uh, but again there's no head to head trials so there's not one rec one drug recommended against the other but um, uh, it seemed like uh, in the right case the right medication needs to be used uh, and again you know steroid free remission is sort of the mainstay goal of what they were trying to say in the guidelines uh, in the recommendations um well, with, uh, um, you know, they, they did talk about um, uh, just that, you know, CAR T cells are, um, you know, there was some long-term data presented at Hewlar um, on patients who were treated with CAR T cells. So that's also something uh, in the radar, but not in the recommendations right now, of course. There's just few patients, but there was discussion in the group about that. Um, again, a high dose uh, IV cyclophosphamide for lupus nephritis is now back in the recommendations and um, can be considered for the right patient. And um, lastly, they do not recommend abrupt steroid uh, stoppage. They do recommend tapering. Um, and um, I, I think those were the main parts of the guidelines. They do say that the SGLT2 inhibitors for lupus nephritis can be tried. There's not a whole lot of data, but there doesn't seem much of a downside uh, to try it. Um, but, but you know, you, they, they do say watch out for UTIs, dehydration, ketoacidosis, especially in patients with uh, multimorbidity. Um, so with that, um, uh, I think this was just a brief overview of the EULA recommendations. Of course, you can go back in and read through all of the recs uh, in detail. Um, and um, this year's me signing off uh, from EULA. This is Bella Mehta. If you can follow me on Twitter at Bella underscore Mehta. Um, and I'm reporting for Room now. Thank you. <laughs>